Today we're going to look at a beast of a graphics card, the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super. And we're going to see whether or not it's powerful enough to get the most out of your high refresh rate 1440p gaming monitor. There's one big reason why I think now is a really good time to answer this question. Because if some dodgier websites on the internet are to be believed, we are on the cusp of a new GPU generation from Nvidia. And not only that, but AMD also has some new high-end GPUs up their sleeves, apparently. So what I want to try and answer with today's video is if you own a current generation high-end graphics card, should you even want more power? Now this in itself seems like a pretty stupid question to me because more is always better and you could always use more power. But how much more do we need to have the ultimate high refresh rate 1440p gaming experience? Because if you're already getting over 144 frames per second in all of the games that you play with a 2080 Super or equivalent graphics card, do you really need to spend more money on a new graphics card or should you spend it on something more responsible like like cryptocurrencies? <laughs> now let's have a look at the contender that's going to defend this generation's performance honor and kind of the previous generations. We've been we've been stuck in a in a rut for a while here. But anyway, the graphics card is the EVGA RTX 2080 Super XC Ultra. Now this graphics card was sent over by EVGA as a loaner unit, but that won't affect my opinion on it. Now this specific variant of the card is actually really nice because it's not got one of those huge bulky coolers on it, so it means that it fits in all form factors, but you know, thermal performance and stuff like that is still in check. I do really like this graphics card. I've been using it for the last couple of weeks, and yeah, I've had no problems with it at all. Now, before we get any further into the video, I just want to point out that there are actually going to be two stages to the benchmarks in the video today. Now, the first one is going to look at a more conventional early 2020 gaming use case and how well the 2080 Super handles it at 1440p high refresh rate. And then the second set of benchmarks is going to look at a more a more future-proof and challenging set of benchmarks. Um, yeah, so stick around for all of that. Now, we also need to look at the rest of the test system before we get into benchmarks, just so that we know what we're working with. Um, as far as the CPU goes, I'm using an Intel i7-9700K, overclocked to 5.1 gigahertz for all of these tests, just so that we have as small a CPU bottleneck as possible, because that is a pretty big issue with higher refresh rate monitors, even at 1440p. As far as RAM goes, we're using 16 gigs of DDR4 3600 megahertz. Now this is a Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro kit sent over by Corsair for, for testing in videos. And then I'll just have the rest of the test configuration listed over here over some pretty B-roll so that you know what the rest of the non-directly performance affecting components are that I used for this test. Now, before we get into the benchmarks, let's just have a look at the settings that I used for the games that I tested. Now, obviously, we're using 2560 by 1440p as the resolution. And because we're using a BenQ EX 2780Q, which has a max refresh rate of 144 hertz, we're aiming for about 144 frames per second from the graphics card. And then finally, in regards to the settings that I'm going to use for all of the games, for the majority of the games, I'm going to be using high settings. Because as Tech Deals quite regularly says, ultra settings is for screenshots and high settings is for actual gaming. Although some games do this weird thing where they have like multiple tiers of high settings for some reason. So they'll have like high and then very high and then super high and then ultra. I, I find this really irritating for some reason. I don't know why. But when that's the case, I choose the preset right under Ultra. So with that, let's have a look at some benchmarks.
after looking at these benchmarks, things are looking decent for the RTX 2080 Super. Especially when looking at faster paced first person shooter games where that higher FPS really matters in my opinion. And I'm not only talking about potato shooters like CSGO and Rainbow Six, but more demanding modern shooters like Battlefield 5 and Modern Warfare are also not doing too badly. Although they're still definitely short of that golden 144 frame per second mark. Now when moving over to more visual safari style games like Assassin's Creed and uh, Tomb Raider and Metro Exodus, it's not looking as good for the 2080 Super. The frame rates are still high and the games do look beautiful and play smoothly, but we're not that close to the 144 frame per second golden zone. Although arguably hitting 144 frames per second in that kind of visual safari style game is not that important in my opinion. Now when looking at these results, things are looking pretty rosy for the RTX 2080 Super and these results are, are pretty impressive. Although these tests don't take into account something that's slowly becoming more relevant in my opinion and that's ray tracing. Now, ray tracing support may not matter that much to you at the moment, but considering the fact that there are a bunch of pretty tasty ray traced titles coming out over the next year, and the new console generation is potentially also going to support it, so it's going to become more mainstream. I think ray tracing performance is an important thing to take into account, because that may be something that we're going to get a huge jump in with the next generation. Although I don't want to get too much into discussing the next generation on this video. So what I decided to do was use the same high settings for all of the ray traced games that I have, and see how much of a difference it makes using kind of middle of the road ray tracing settings on these games. So let's see what happens. And here is where we find the Achilles heel to this generation's high-end gaming performance. Because even though this 2080 Super is one of the most powerful ray tracing capable graphics cards available today, it really struggles. And I wasn't even using ultra ray tracing settings, I was using the same high settings I used for the rest of the games. I do want to reiterate though that with this generation of games and the games that I tested for this video, adding those high ray tracing settings visually didn't make much of a difference in my opinion and it had a huge impact on the performance so I obviously would recommend everybody turn them off because there's very little improvement for a massive degradation of performance. But if ray tracing becomes nearly as big as Nvidia wants us to think it's going to get over the next couple of years then this generation of high-end GPU isn't gonna age very well, and this is where we need a huge jump in performance in the next generation. In conclusion, after having done all of these tests and gaming on this system for a while, I think if all you care about is more conventional gaming performance, I think you shouldn't be too worried about upgrading if you have something that performs similarly to an RTX 2080 Super, unless there's a huge jump in performance in the next generation. However, there is one point where it falls short, and that's still definitely in its ray tracing performance. Now, we still don't really know how relevant this is going to be as time goes on, but it seems like there definitely is a push in that direction from more sides than just Nvidia. And with that, let me know in the comment section below if you're happy with your current configuration and if you would be looking to upgrade when new GPUs do eventually come out. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and then follow me on whatever social media you're interested in. I'll have them all linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.